All right, let's finish off lesson one here for chapter 15. One more example to look at. We want to take a look at example number three in the notes here. It says, in a two liter gaseous reaction system, two moles of methane was initially added to 10 moles of chlorine gas. At equilibrium, the system contains 1.4 moles of chloromethane, uh, CH3Cl, and some hydrogen chloride, HCl. Again, we need to start with that balanced reaction, complete the ice table, and calculate any maximum yield for chloromethane. So this will take three stoichiometric steps for us. There's a shortcut that I'm going to introduce to you guys to help you out with it. Um, and we can calculate that percentage yield and state the position of equilibrium. Note the units, however. If I give you two moles of methane and place this into a two liter vessel, what is the concentration? It is not two moles per liter, it is half that value. Remember four concentrations, two moles over two liters would be a one mole per liter molar concentration. So this is one of the things that can happen. Not all uh, systems can have a, a one liter size, or we might ask you to do a little bit of that solutions uh, concentration stuff that we did in Chemistry 20 with this. This was a favorite on the diploma exam to give you differing vessel sizes for different measured amounts of moles, grams, or whatever. All right, you don't have that real issue here, but it is a realistic problem to deal with. So you'll see this in some of your uh, various practice problems. All right, let's uh, get to that one. Here you go, here's your balanced chemical equation. This was an organic reaction that we haven't done yet since we moved organic to the end of the course. So methane reacts with chlorine to produce, there's your chloromethane, one of the reasons why we gave you that formula, and your hydrogen chloride, which you should know how to do. And from our initial values of concentration, we put two moles of methane in your two liter container. So you have a one mole per liter concentration there. For your chlorine, they said 10 moles of chlorine gas, but that's also in a two liter vessel. So that's five moles per liter, and we should have no product to begin with in our initial state. All right, we're gonna try and figure out the changes. We were told that you get 1.4 moles of chloromethane at the end, but remember, this is all in a closed system of a fixed volume of two liters. So that would be 1.4 over two, which is 0 0.70 moles per liter of chloromethane at equilibrium. In these earlier problems, we do get to know one of our concentrations at equilibrium, so it really becomes a fairly simple math problem. When you looked at the balanced equation, you realized that everything is in a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one -to -one -to -one ratio. So, if you make a note here, I have increased by 0 0.70 moles per liter in a one-to-one -one ratio with hydrogen chloride, what do you think you're gonna get? Well, just make note that this is all because of a one-to-one -one ratio. If you tell me that you're aware of the stoichiometric ratio, we can avoid having to go through and do all of those stoichiometric calculations. All right, but normally what we would do is figure out that if I have a 0 0.70 mole per liter chloromethane concentration, and I want to figure out about hydrogen chloride, I would just use my mole ratio of one to one. This proves it, this is never wrong, this is the best way to do it, but again, we're trying to eliminate some of the tediousness of this. So, your Chem 30s now, if you can start to show me that you are still aware of the mole ratio in all of these problems, all right, when you get simplified ones like this, you can just tell me what that ratio is and I can trust that you're doing the math. But you can see that it would be that same 0 0.70 mole per liter concentration. So this guy goes up by 0 0.70. What should happen to chlorine? Well, if it's 0 0.70 here and it's a one to one ratio, this should be 0 0.70 moles per liter as well, but now it's a decrease, leaving me with 4.30 moles per liter. For this one here, again, it's a 0 0.70 decrease, again, because of that one to one ratio, and that leaves me with 0 0.30. So I almost got to a quantitative state here. I only have very little remaining of my methane. So we'll see what that uh, tells us about equilibrium. 
So I've now completed my equilibrium concentrations. From here, that's where percent reaction and percent yield calculations come from. Stoichiometry is applied to the changes. Once you get equilibriums, then we can go to all other calculations and interpretations. So for that, percent yield is just equal to some sort of actual concentration over a theoretical maximum times 100. Okay, so in this case, if we just take one product, doesn't matter which one we got, I got 0 0.70 moles per liter of my chloromethane. Now, if this was a quantitative reaction, which one of these two things do you think would be the limiting reagent? Is it going to be one mole per liter or five moles per liter? In a one-to-one -one consumption ratio, one mole per liter should run out first. So, if I used all one mole per liter of methane, how much chloromethane do you think we could produce? Again, shortcut available because it's all one-to-one -one ratio. If I used all one mole per liter, I should produce one mole per liter here. And my theoretical concentration, theoretical maximum, would be to find that limiting reagent and assume a quantitative reaction. Should be one mole per liter. And so we can see that we get a 70% reaction in this case. And that would leave us with an equilibrium greater than 50% or a product favored equilibrium. This reaction is exothermic. It has an easier forward reaction than reverse reaction. And so you're able to produce a larger amount of product than 50% and sit as a product favored balance. Okay, there's your three examples. It is fairly straightforward. We're just really adding in a couple of different procedural steps for how we do the stoichiometry. Make sure that you've read through the examples. Make sure you've gone to D2L to look at those two other videos. I would post them on my YouTube page, but I'm not sure about uh, any sort of copyright infringements for taking some of those other videos and being able to post them elsewhere. So please just look at them on the privatized site of D2L. Um, and look at them there. Page 672 to six, uh, 676 to 682 takes care of lesson one. All right, there's about four examples that you should try. This is fairly straightforward and only a slight adjustment from the stoichiometry you've done before. Don't forget quantitative states used to uh, predict your theoretical maximum. Remember where you are applying stoic, that is in the change of your ice table, but percentage yields come from the equilibrium of your ice table. Okay, try those out, see how it goes. Lesson two will be up shortly and uh, we will finish off chapter 15.1. All right, good luck with all of that. We'll see you guys in the next videos.